Hello there, welcome back to our channel and uh, we continue our discussion on the LC type oscillators which are commonly used in uh, radio frequency applications. So one of the type uh, called as call pips oscillator we have explained uh, in our previous module and this time we have brought to you the new type of oscillator is called as Hartley oscillator. So remember, it's another LC type oscillator. And here is the basic circuit implementation of uh, one transistor and uh, a capacitor and the inductor together. We can implement this kind of uh, oscillator. So what it has, it has a gain element in the form of a transistor. It could be BJT or FET or MOSFET or even an operational amplifier. And then uh, you need a feedback network which is composed of a tapped inductor, uh, which is uh, shown as uh, here, or there can be a two inductors in series with each other right here. And uh, there is a capacitor, of course, the tunable so that the resonant frequency of this tank circuit together composed of L and C can be tuned. So together, this inductor and capacitor combination forming a feedback network. Okay, so there is a DC power supply source. So that is connected to the drain pin of the transistor. You have the gate pin, which receives the input uh, from the feedback network and there is an output which is fed back to the feedback network. This is the source pin. So in the form of a block diagram, we can see that this first block in the top is the amplifier unit, which is this uh, transistor. The feedback network is right here, which is the combination of tapped inductor and uh, capacitor. In place of tapped inductor, you can have two inductors in series, as I just mentioned. And the output of the amplifier is given to the feedback network, which we can see from the source. This output is being fed to the feedback network and the output of the feedback network is coming back to amplifier as its input. So output of this tank circuit is coming back to the gate pin of the FET. So as soon as you switch on the power supply, since there is no external input, as you can see in the block diagram form also, and here in the circuit diagram, except the DC power supply, you don't have any external input to the oscillator and that's what the oscillator is. It produces the DC source or converts the DC source energy into an alternating sinusoidal waveform in case of a Hartley oscillator, which is a harmonic type oscillator. And the frequency of uh, oscillation produced will be determined by the values of these components L and C, which is given by this formula one over two pi square root LC where L is the total inductance of L1 and L2 if you have used two inductors in series with this. So as soon as you will uh, switch on the DC power supply, there will be a drain current to source current that will flow into the transistor, making the transistor conduct. And uh, for oscillation, uh, you need to satisfy the two criteria of oscillation. One, the loop gain, that is the gain provided by the transistor A multiplied by the attenuation factor beta, that is A times beta, has to be greater than or equal to 1. That's the closed loop gain right here in this. And the phase angle of A times beta has to be exactly 0 degree or multiples of 2 pi radians or 360 degree or 720 degree and so on. So you switch on the DC power supply. Initially, there is a noise into the circuit due to the transistor, inductor, capacitor, etc. that circulate in the loop. And noise has all frequency component and only one frequency component of that noise will be filtered out by this filter circuit, which is the combination of L and C. And that filtered component of a noise at a frequency decided by this formula 
will be given back to the gate pin of the transistor for it to amplify that component of the noise. And again, the amplified signal is being fed back to the feedback network and the process repeats. And as soon as you see that the A multiplied by beta is greater than or equal to one and the phase shift around the loop is exactly zero degree, you can start or sense the sustaining oscillation from the source pin right here at the output. In the block diagram, you can have the output from the earth. So here also you can have the output. So this kind of oscillator is commonly used for RF uh, radio frequency application. And uh, it can also produce fairly low distortion sine wave signals in the range of 10 kilohertz to 100 kilohertz frequency range. So Hartley oscillator is known to produce fairly low distortion sine wave output. Now, let me take you to the practical circuit uh, of a Hartley oscillator. So right here, you see that we have used the JFET transistor part number is 2N5484. And uh, then uh, you see L1, L2 and C1 together, they are forming a feedback network. So this is an active gain element and L1, L2 and C1, they are acting as a feedback network. So the gain of the feedback network is beta right here and the gain of the amplifier is A. And you see the output of the amplifier is fed back through the source pin to the feedback network and the output of the feedback network at this node is being coupled to the gate pin of the transistor through this input coupling capacitor C2. C3 is the output coupling capacitor that couples the oscillatory output to the load RL right here. This is V1, which is a DC power supply source. Uh, C4 is the filter capacitor to remove the noise from the DC power supply. Uh, R1 is the biasing resistor to bias the transistor in a desired mode of operation. So that's the uh, practical circuit uh, to implement Hartley oscillator. You can see that the values have been provided and the value of the frequency of oscillation will be given by L1, L2 and C1 values. So we just gave you the formula, plug in those values of L and C, where L is the total inductance of L1 and L2, and you get the frequency of oscillation that will be produced and measured at this node. So there are a few circuit implementation again, instead of JFET, you can use the BJT transistor Q1. So here you can see that it has three pins, emitter, collector, and the base pin. The R1 is the emitter degeneration resistor used in the BJT to stabilize the operating point of the transistor against the variations in the operating point due to the temperature, noise, the vibration, etc. R2, R4, R3 are the biasing arrangement using the register. So you see that there is a feedback from collector to the base. And this kind of circuit is called as collector to base bias uh, configuration of the BJT. And uh, C2 is the input coupling capacitor of the transistor that is going to couple the feedback network's output back to the transistor's base pin. So where is the feedback network? Right here, L1, L2, and C1. Together, they are composed, uh, composing the feedback network. And the input to the feedback network is the output of the transistor Q1, which is the collector pin. So right here, you see that this gives you the input to the feedback network. The feedback network, as I said, acts as a bandpass filter and therefore it will have a resonant frequency determined by L1, L2 and C1. RP is the parasitic uh, resistance, uh, which is there can be modeled again in the feedback network. The quality factor Q of this electronic uh, uh, electrical tuned circuit is 100. So output of the transistor or amplifier is 
input to the feedback and the output of the feedback right at this node becoming an input to the base pin of the gain amplifier through this C2, which is a coupling capacitor. Then C3 is the output coupling capacitor and uh, C3 and uh, RL together, they act as a high pass filter where with these values of the components and the device parameters, you get to produce the 30 megahertz um, uh, sinusoidal output waveform and the power of in that output waveform is uh, calculated to be 7 decibel m dBm. Here you have a power supply, DC power supply and R5 and C4 are again the bising arrangement. C4 is just to filter out the ripples in the DC power supply. Uh, so, as we can see, we can compare the two versions of the LC oscillator both are LC oscillator. First one is the Hartley oscillator, which is what we are learning in this module. And its dual is called as Colpitts oscillator. The major difference and the single difference is here. In the Hartley, you have two inductors in series and across that combination, you apply a capacitor in parallel. And whereas in Colpitts, as we have seen in the previous model, you have two capacitors in series and across that you apply an inductor. Again, the value of this tank circuit components decides your frequency of oscillation. Together, they are acting as a beta or feedback factor or feedback network. And the gain element is provided by this BJT, which is biased in both the circuits in a common emitter mode. Base pin receives the input through this coupling capacitor from the feedback network and the output of the transistor is being fed to the feedback network through this output coupling capacitor. Choke and the DC power supply is there just to produce the stabilized, uh, to, to, to provide the uh, DC power supply to the circuit. This uh, choke's purpose is to reduce the electromagnetic interference, uh, R1, uh, R is there, so you can see that there is a feedback from collector to the base. So it, this uh, is a feedback, a negative feedback from collector to base. So it acts as a collector to base bias configuration. Okay, so hope you understood the basic theory behind the Hartley oscillator, its type, what kind of waveform it produces, how the circuit can be analyzed. Uh, using FET, BJT, or even operational amplifier can also be used. And you can uh, now be able, should be able to identify the feedback, identify the various uh, components of the oscillator, such as the feedback network, uh, your gain amplifying unit, uh, your uh, other capacitors and uh, resistor, your the biasing network. Remember, the BJT or FPT can also be used in all the three configurations as an amplifying unit, such as common base, common collector, common emitter for BJT, and common drain, common source, and common gate for FET. So depends on your pros and cons and impedances requirement, you can design and construct the Hartley oscillator. So hope you understood this uh, module. If you like this video, click the like button, uh, subscribe uh, and share this module with others for a wider reach. Till then, stay tuned for more engaging quality content like this. And till then, wish you happy learning.